Hello and welcome. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, whichever uh, time zone you are in. I'm so glad to have you all with us today. I'm Michelle Rasmussen with Autodesk. I have on the line with me Germont Jeroman uh, and Naman Marsawala, and they are both here to talk a bit about advanced steel and Revit for um, structural. So. I'm excited to have them both here. While we're waiting for everyone to join, um, what I would love to do is have everyone let me know where you're coming in from. I see Ivan has already let me know that he's coming in from Russian and so that are from Russia. So I'm excited to have you here, Ivan. Um, but just open up that Q and a panel, type in where you're joining from, and um, I'll start to let everyone know. Um, by the way, Ivan is asking the question, is this localized? And it, it is English only today, um, but we, we are looking at ways to localize these, uh, at least the recordings afterwards. I, I don't, I'm not making any promises that we'll have it done very soon, um, but uh, we are looking into that. So, all right, so we have, ooh, I might pronounce this wrong, I apologize. Uh, Yoval from Israel. Derek from Ireland, Parth from India, um, Born from Sweden, great to have you, Effie from Greece, awesome, this is such a global audience, I love seeing this, this is wonderful, and uh, we have Jamie from Jacksonville, Florida, it's starting to move too fast for me to read them all, um, Vivek from India, Paula from Canada, uh, Sharice, oh, Sharice, hey, I know you. I used to work with Sharice. Um, Sharice is coming in from Montana. It's nice to have you with us. Robert from the UK and David from Pennsylvania. Philip, nice to have you with us. Philip's from Paris. Ivan from Russia. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to give everyone just a few more minutes. Sometimes, um, you know, getting logged in and getting the audio working some can, can take a minute, uh, depending on, you know, internet connectivity and everything like that. So I will give everyone just one more minute. So keep bringing in where you're coming in from. I apologize if I skipped your name. I'll, I'll try to go back and, and repeat some that I, I may have missed. Um, again, some of them were coming in so fast, I, I couldn't get through all of them. Um, oh, I might pronounce this one wrong. Jo Joao from Portugal. Jeff from the US, nice to have you. Nikki from the UK, awesome. Oh, we have someone from Saudi Arabia. I might pronounce this one wrong too, but let me try. Um, Abdul Mahsen, I, I am so sorry if I murdered that name. <laughs> um, okay, great. Oh, we have uh, Thabo from South Africa, great to have you. Aron from Denmark, great. And Lionel from Waco, Texas. Awesome. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get through some orders of business while people are still logging in, just so that uh, we can, you know, not waste your time today. So let me make sure that you're seeing my screen. Yep, I see it. It's working out well. Okay, great. All right. So because uh, Gernot is going to Gernot is going to be going through what's new in the software. I just want to throw this safe harbor statement out there. Um, if we make any forward uh, looking statements at all, don't make purchasing decisions based on those forward looking statements. We're here to give you as much information as we can uh, to help you understand you know, what is new and what is coming up in the software to let you know how that will help you do your job better. And so um, again, don't make any purchasing statements according to forward looking statements or decisions. <laughs> Boy, I feel like it's Monday today. All right, um, before we get, begin, the lines are muted to reduce background noise because we are recording it and everyone who registered for the session will receive a copy of the recording when the session is over. Um, but I do want to try to make this as interactive as possible. And so that's why I have you type in where you're coming in from in the Q&A panel so that you get used to using that. Um, but if you do have questions, definitely feel free to ask those in the Q&A panel. And at the end of Gernot's presentation, I will um, repeat some of those questions out loud so that he can answer them. 
And I do have, um, like I said, Naaman is on the line with us. Naaman is an expert elite, and he is amazing at uh, the, all the Revit products. And so he will be helping answer some of those questions in the background. And any questions that we don't get to today, we will bring them up offline and answer the answer those questions directly to you via email. So hopefully we get through all of them. Uh, it just depends on how many you have today. Um, in addition, if you do have questions and want to ask them live, if you are brave enough to ask them live, I can um, unmute you and you will just let me know that by either putting a, a little comment in the questions that you'd like to ask it live or you can raise your hand in that participants panel or the attendees panel and I can unmute your line. So. Um, just, just as a reminder, these are all of the different meetups that we do have going on. We have our architectural on the fourth Tuesday. That was just earlier this week. BIM management is next week. So if, if you're in the building industry and, and want to learn more about BIM management, um, join us next Tuesday. Uh, we also have civil engineering, the electrical engineering and mechanical engineering that are listed here in the middle. These are more on the manufacturing side. And so for electrical, mechanical and structural, uh, you'll come to the building engineering meetup, which is the fourth Thursday of every month. So I'm glad to have you all here today. We are going to be focusing on structural. Um, before I let you, uh, you're not actually take over and, and show you the presentation, I do have one more a little announcement. Autodesk University call for proposals is open right now. So if you have ever wanted to be a speaker at AU, now is your time to submit those proposals. Um, I will put the link to the site right in the chat panel so that you'll have that. Um, but it is right there. And so just go out to that site. If you click on the stay in touch gray box, uh, you'll get automatically emailed uh, any updates going on with AU. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and have Gernot actually start sharing his. Are you ready, Gernot? Yes, I am. Thanks. I'm going to sh share my screen one second. Perfect. Okay, let me know if you can see it. I am seeing your screen. It's perfect. Okay, very good. So, welcome everybody. I appreciate you joined this meeting today. Um, mm, First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Gernot Jeromin. I'm the product manager for Structural Steel at Autodesk. Uh, if you say Structural Steel, there are two things. One thing is advanced steel, of course, and the other one is Revit, but in Revit only the Structural Steel part. So let's talk steel for the next, uh, let's say, 50 minutes, roughly. Um, I am, you hear that in my accent, I'm not native English. I'm located in Germany. Uh, in Germany, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you won't believe it, but such a thing exists. And uh, yes, and um, I think I mentioned I'm with Autodesk since two years, working in different industries, different companies in the past. So uh, started to work on my first steel projects even before AutoCAD 10 on DOS and Unix workstation was available. So quite some time. Uh, however, uh, we have also created a small survey uh, just to learn where you are from, what you are doing, and other questions more important, like uh, how your workflows within the in your company is working, and how what do you think what we should do to improve our work. Um, there's one thing what I want to mention uh, because that's not always clear. So, what is a product manager? Usually, I, I uh, phrase it like this: for for you guys, I'm a little bit like Santa Claus. You can come, you can sit on my on my lap, you can tell me all your wishes, and once in a year, you, you get a surprise. What you what we what I pull out of uh, 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 as a, as a present to you. So this having said, is if you don't say anything to us, if you don't talk to us, uh, you can't complain uh, that we didn't do anything or didn't do what you expected. And uh, I always like to listen to you guys uh, about uh, uh, what you think, what we might to do. That doesn't mean that we do everything what you wish to do, but uh, it pull, uh, put some some weight onto it. So we've had that before. I can overjump that, uh, uh, um, go straight into it. Uh, I just want to discuss with you a few things 
before we have a look at what we have done in Revit in advanced year uh, the last year. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is the, some kind of structured workflow, how we see that. Uh, let's say we, we start a steer project anywhere, the architect, uh, he's going to create something like an LOD 200, so this is where we are, and then it will be pushed over to the engineer, and then he's working somewhere between an LOD 200 and LOD 350, and he's using either some kind of stick model or is creating a design intent, including some connections, and he's using some additional tools, for instance, a, a robot for structure analysis, analysis or partner applications, what, whatever they, they're going to do. So doing some magic, creating content, which the detailer can work with to create an LOD 400. So now we are between 350 and 400, and then we have the fabricator who has to fabricate all that stuff, and um, and that's it. From it is possible, like this is just one possible workflow. It it could look slightly different in, in a few cases, but let's say starting with Revit from the architect point of view, switching over, and then anywhere here from the detailing point of view to advanced year to fabrication. Uh, when it comes to fabrication, we do support some additional tools, either for MIS applications or straight producing and C files for fabrication. There's one thing that I want to mention is like post-processing, what does it mean? Uh, we get more and more requests like if the whole project is done to analyze how can I improve in the future, where can I save money, where I've spent my money and so on. This is uh, something which comes at the end. So where we are, it with Revit in advanced years. So let's say in the middle we have a timeline. This is where we are today and this is some kind of future vision. Uh, on top of the line we have Revit and down here we have advanced year. And then we have here these lines where we have done something and each time if there's a little flag that means that it's a continuous thing. So it's not a one-time thing. So we added for instance in Revit roughly 140 steel connections uh, uh, during the last couple of years. So that's an ongoing thing. We are going to add more and more connections. And uh, the same for advanced deal. We're always working on documentation and productivity enhancements, and that's an ongoing thing. So this is what we have done in the past. We have added connections for Revit. We are going to add some steel modifications. Uh, you see that in a moment. Um, we want to continue to do that, uh, uh, especially in regards to uh, automation processes and on uh, down here we want to maybe work on some kind of support for BIM 360 design or multi-level assemblies and then comes to a point where we want to bring Revit and Advanced Steel closer together. Uh, we, we can discuss maybe at the end like where we are, why we are doing stuff like that, this is depending on your questions. So in the future, we want to be able to create some kind of an LOD 400 on Revit and maybe maybe creating some kind of tools to create some kind of shop runs. This is all fun. We don't know how it's looking like yet. So just to give you an idea. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we, I'm going to explain this whole stuff a little bit more. So what is new? Uh, what is new in Revit. Let's start there. And again, only this year, not the rest. So there's one thing what we have done, we have added some kind of automation tools uh, to create connections with an uh, Revit based on uh, Dynamo. So the, um, the whole idea was you, you, you have a model, you go to Dynamo, you uh, uh, use the connections which uh, uh, you have created, put them uh, and some kind of library and, and create those connections automatically more or less. Um, hey, John, what, sorry, so sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we're still seeing the title slide and it sounded like you were clicking through some slides. I Is do. it paused? That's interesting. Um, no, it's not on my side. Let me Let's check. Let me see what's happening. Because we're seeing it. Oh, now it's working. Now it's working. Perfect. Not sure. Oh, no, you have missed all the slides. That's unfortunate. One second. I'm going back a few slides. Sorry for that. Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. I, I thought you were still kind of introducing, so apologize. 
Okay, so that was the whole workflow going from architect LOD 200 to engineering and detailing fabrication. So this is what I've explained. That's the slide for that. Going from from Revit to advanced, maybe supported by BIM 360 and using some other tools. And this is what we have done in the past, like in Revit steel connections, steel modifications, going to work on more automation stuff and enhancing up to an LOD 400 and then advanced steel productivity and so on and so on. So this is what we discussed. So what is new going in here? Uh, so let's have a look at this video. Uh, again, it was possible to create those connections by using Dynamo. And uh, what is new since uh, uh, um, uh, the last ver uh, version 2020.2, 20 that we can uh, uh, consider uh, analytical results for placing these connections. For, for instance, in this case, I'm going to create a, a, um, a connection between the columns and the beams. And I can say, okay, this is my, uh, uh, my the range of my forces. And if I insert the connection, it will create those knees only um, on the front and the bottom frame. Even if the other frames are the same uh, shape sizes, but the uh, analytical circumstances are a little different, that, that's the reason we can differentiate that now. Uh, another thing is that uh, um, we have these connection, say, libraries, right? You can create types. And um, what uh, uh, in the past you've had to go in there and you've had to load all those uh, uh, types into your model. And uh, that was a little bit tricky. You couldn't organize it. it was, maybe you have different types of, uh, uh, of uh, libraries you want to use. So now you can use the Dynamo player to load those uh, connections and types uh, into your current model from an external file. So it's it's better organized. Uh, just to give you uh, an idea for productivity, let's say you are working for uh, different companies and you have different types of libraries, you can use that uh, 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 this technology to load from one or the other uh, location to uh, to set up your system. If you remember like working uh, uh, in the past with uh, uh, with all of that, it was a little bit tricky to install it and to make it work. It's all implemented now out of the box in Revit since version 2021. So you can just go in there, open it and run it. So what else have we done? There, I've mentioned that we have added a lot of tools and not only the connections, but also so like contour cuts, bolts, uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, um, drill holes, plates, and so on. In up to version 2020, you could create all of those objects, but it was really tricky to modify them. For instance, if the if a bolt pattern or drill pattern has changed, and you want to change that you've had to delete the whole thing and create it anew. So it was really tricky to, to modify that. Uh, since version 2021, it is now possible to change all of that. So you can just change the size of, uh, of a plate. You can go in there and change drill patterns, bolt patterns. You can change the sizes. You can go in there, uh, modify con uh, uh, contour and where everything will be adjusted. Uh, for drill holes, you can move them now around, you can change the diameter and so on. So that was a, 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 a very important missing thing what we have added now in 2021. Uh, another one is uh, we've had these 140 roughly connections, but it was not possible really to create stiffeners. Stiffeners now got added to uh, to the connections and uh, you just go in there, you can load them and you can place them inside of your object. So in this case, I'm going to insert uh, a stiffener in my, in my column and just select the object and say where I want to place it at the location and here we go. And this is a, um, an, let's say, parametric object 
so you can copy that and you if the size of the column for instance will change the stiffener will be adjusted automatically so they know each other and stuff like that can easily be done you have the possibility to create stiffeners in any way so you have all the uh, uh, um, uh, values you can have full stiffeners half stiffeners by size you can define the uh, 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 the edges do you want to have a, a champ or not and how is the champ looking like and um, again you can copy that around and uh, you can copy the stiffeners even from from an uh, uh, I section to a C channel and stuff like that uh, another request that we had it was not possible to uh, uh, create steel elements in any view or section so with uh, 2021 that's not possible you can create or you can use any section you can uh, define the uh, uh, the work plane uh, just by uh, picking a plane or, or using a 61 in this case a grid and now you can create a, a, a contour say here this should be my uh, uh, my plate and will be created automatically on that view uh, another thing which came with stiffeners, and that was uh, uh, one of the reasons why we didn't have that before, uh, uh, is one of the things is the uh, possibility. Oops, on. Oh, it doesn't start. Let's try that. Ah, here we go. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, create plates, so if you want to dimension them, it was possible to access the outer edges. Um, so that was working in the past, but uh, uh, in the current version, 2021, it is now possible to access uh, the, the center point or the middle point. So you can go in there, you see what we found, and you can dimension that. Uh, this is working in, uh, uh, in both directions, so in the, in the plane view or in the cross section. So if you now go to the cross section of these stiffeners, you can uh, um, dimension them from center to center. And of course, the dimension is linked to the object. So if you go and move the stiffener uh, away, the dimensions will be updated automatically. So what is new in advanced steel? Let's have a look at that. One thing is for the uh, multi-leader lines for weld symbols. The, that was possible before, but now it's possible that you can say that if the objects have different position numbers, uh, they get uh, uh, separate uh, weld flex. Uh, so in this case, we have a smaller and a bigger. Uh, um, uh, here's a, a stiffener. This one's a little bit different, so it get unique. Uh, um, Flex. The other thing is, if you are not satisfied with the flex, you can uh, modify those. Okay, here we go. So let's say I have here um, uh, an assembly going in there, and they have their existing automatically created word flex. You can go in there and say you want just by selecting that, and in the context menu, you can say I want to remove one of those lines so you can move that around and if you say yeah i need new lines just select it right mouse click context menu say you want to add a leader line and you just say select the point where the uh, uh, arrow should go to that's it easy like that and of course if you do a modification to the object uh, we keep those modifications uh, uh, later on so we'll be uh, uh, updated automatically we have new detailing sorting criteria. So if you go to creating the 2D drawings, you have more possibilities to sort them and using the numbering. Uh, so that's more, more like it. And then this is uh, uh, the next one is something that a few customers have uh, requested uh, to consider drill holes or drill patterns for, um, for numbering. So what does it mean? You can go now to either to a drill pattern, or in this case, a single drill hole. And there's an additional switch where you can say, please consider for numbering or not. And this is working also for the whole object and say all oh, drill holes should be considered for numbering or not. So the 
this having said, is if I'm going to select now these five beams and run the numbering, you would see that I will get three different positions um, because the uh, uh, the three in the center, we said, I don't want to consider the drill holes, so they are all the same, even if the drill patterns are looking different. So where where does it make sense? So this is uh, a request for uh, all those companies working with uh, prefabricated uh, 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 beams where the uh, the objects are pre-drilled, so so to speak. So they have existing drill holes, and the only interesting thing for fabrication later on is the additional drill holes. So you can do that now. So I have uh, uh, stuff doing stuff like that. Uh, switch connector patterns. Uh, this is a, a, a request that we have for quite some time. So uh, uh, we we have. Uh, um, objects with bolts or with anchors and you can go in there now and selecting the the, uh, the fasteners and say change them into drill holes so you don't have to delete the whole thing and create the drill holes again you can just switch that and this is uh, uh, working the other way around let's say you have drill holes and now you want to have uh, bolts you you can add them uh, like this, just you would, uh, via the context menu and say you want to have an anchor or bolts. Here we go. Uh, mono -wheels. Um It's better to show the, uh, the video for that. Uh, you know we have all these, uh, um, a lot of uh, possibilities in regards to hand grades and these panelized mono -wheels have been added. They work like all the other hand grades. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, as panels, you, you you have all the possibilities. Like for all the other handrails, you can define uh, uh, the size of of it. You you can say uh, what shapes you want to have. In this case, what kind of pipes? Uh, how you want to connect those? Where you want to place them? Uh, and this is of course not only working for the whole. Uh, handrail, but also for every single segment. So in this case, we have done modifications for for the whole handrail. Uh, but you can also say, okay, only for the first segment, I want to have a, a, a different handrail, or want to have a, 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 a plate only in the first segment, or for all segments, and so on. So it's it's flexible as all the other one, but only for for these panelized. Uh, this is a, also a, a request which came from some customers uh, where we can um, extend uh, 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 beams in the model. Uh, it's based on the AutoCAD 20, uh, uh, 21 uh, possibility to lengthen objects. So it's working the same way. You select the object, you have a grip, and you say just lengthen. And then it, you, it will be stretched only along its center line. Uh, this is working for straight objects and also for curved objects. Um, you could use, of course, the uh, trim command, which is working fairly well. But in this case, it's also projecting the endpoint. So you, it, even if the, uh, uh, the endpoint of the of the beam doesn't interfere with uh, another axis or with another shape. You can just project it, so it's really uh, uh, working only along its uh, its axis. Um, this was another request from some customers to uh, um, um, hide and uh, show and select uh, uh, objects. Uh, if uh, by the meaning of if they if they are uh, existing single parts or assembly drawings. So in this case, I going to create a, a filter where it says show me all the objects which have an assembly drawing right it's a save that and if i'm using that it will select all the objects which have which have an assembly so um, i can go in there and i can uh, uh, say i want to have show me everything which doesn't have an assembly um, for instance, I've maybe missed to create those assembly drawings for some objects. So I'm using this one. It will select all of those. 
I can use them, this filter to select them and create now the 2D drawings for everything which doesn't have a 2D drawing. And since they are um, uh, uh, saved, I can use them in the, as queries in the Project Explorer right away. So I can go in there, execute them. Um, for all of those who are creating user sections from time to time, um, it sometimes it was a little bit tricky to uh, 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 to do so because uh, there can be uh, small mistakes which you easily can oversee. Uh, you see that in this example in a moment. Uh, you say, okay, I want to generate my uh, um, my user sections and you in the message box now you see okay most of them was was working but a few didn't work um, and if you go in there and say okay there is an a self crossing object in this shape so just going in there will zoom automatically to this point and say okay uh, this line is crossing not good I have to fix that the other thing is really a common mistake is uh, that the contour is not closed or that's Totally impossible, you would say, but let's say happens from time to time. I, I sh it shows an error. Look, there's something wrong. If you zoom in there, yeah, it's right. There is a mistake. Selecting it, closing it, fixing it. And the other mistake, which could be that it doesn't have a shape uh, 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 name. So like the first one, and we'll mention that as well, and you can fix it, and then all the shapes will be created uh, perfectly. We've done some improvements to the SQL Server. One thing is that we have updated the file format to SQL 2014 update 3. Uh, we have done some other modifications to it. And what we also did, we now support uh, SQL uh, Server editions like SQL Server Standard or SQL Server Enterprise Edition. And you can um, use those as well. When it comes to localization, we have done uh, tons of additions, modifications. Since you are all around the world, just to mention a few ones, uh, um, this is what we have done for the US. Uh, uh, besides a few modifications, for instance, to uh, nuts and washers, where some fixes we have done, we have cleaned up the whole drawing styles, dimension rules, and stuff like that. Uh, deleted everything which was not needed anymore. Uh, um, so it's much, much easier, much better to use in the current version. And for for other areas, like for for Germany in this case, we have done other updates as well. So it's a long list, can't go over all of that. And the last thing I want to mention here is uh, the uh, uh, Revit extension, advanced deal extension for Revit. Uh, for those who don't know that, so we have this bi-directional interface between Revit and Advanced D. So I have here now a model in Revit, which includes uh, uh, not only the, uh, the stick model, but also uh, a lot of connections. So I can export them to a file, go into Advanced Deal and say, I want to import this project in here. And what you get is not only this object, it's all including intelligent connections and everything you need so you can run numbering you can select these objects at, as they are and uh, uh, create 2d drawings so in this case i'm just taking uh, uh, this beam which has been created on revit and creating the uh, this drawing out of the box with advanced steel so now in advanced steel I'm going to do a modification. For instance, I have here uh, 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 this frame structure. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to modify that. So I can add stuff. I can modify stuff. I can delete stuff. And then it should work the other way around. So going from advanced here back to Revit. And instead of doing a simple import, I can say I want to synchronize these two. So comparing my current version with the uh, imported version so now it's going to update my Revit model and now everything is in sync between advanced deal and Revit. Okay so this is what uh, what we have done so uh, I want to take a few more moments to talk about workflows because that will explain a little bit more 
why we are working on stuff, uh, what we are doing, what might we are going to do in the future, just to give you an idea. So let's say we have, uh, um, we have four different guys. So we, we have an architect, an engineer, a detailer, and fabricator. So and they all are going to talk to each other. Uh, so and uh, as we have seen before, the architect usually is the guy with the brilliant ideas, and the others have to bring it to life and make it work. So for sake of time, I just want to focus only on two of those guys. I want to focus only on the engineer and the detailer. Um, so the engineer typically is working up to roughly an LOD 350. He's creating typical connections and he's creating basic structures. And the detailer is going to create an LOD 400 with all the connections and he's going to create the complete model. Um, so this having said is what will happen if the detailer has a question? So the engineer, uh, he is a bright guy, he has some bright ideas as well, not only the architect, and they want to talk to each other. So again, the architect, we keep them out of the game for now because he's usually going to create some modifications and the others have to take care about it. So we drop that for the moment. The other ones, the fabricator and the detailers and the engineers talk to them as well. But that's a different story. Just keep it simple, only these two. So there's a question, the engineer has an idea, and he is going to answer that. And another question, and another one, another one, another one. So this is usually what will happen. So if we have a look at today, uh, the engineer is creating these typical connections and the detailers to work with that. Let's say the engineer is not working with typical connections, he's going to create a more complete model. So uh, I'm not saying he is going to create an LOD 400, I'm just saying more complete than today. So the more complete and the more accurate he's creating the model, the less questions the detailer will have. So the communication between the two will be much, much better. And if we extend that, that will also be better for the fabricator and for the architect, that everything, everyone is talking in a different way to each other. So, and that includes like the only, if we focus only the detailer, so we, it's not only one guy working on it, could be multiple guys and they, usually are not only on, on one big table, so they can work separated from each other and lately anywhere in the world uh, um, working offshore. So, and now they all want to, they all have questions, they all want to talk to each other, and this is what we believe what we have to do uh, to to uh, uh, enhance those workflows to make them work better. And if you, if you come back to this initial slide where we have uh, uh, Revit and advanced deal and stuff like that and all these different stages this is where we are going into to make them all work closer together so yeah that's it from my side a lot of talking um, now it's really up to you if you have any questions yeah shoot away all right we do have some questions come in um, I've been just asking the question or more like miss, making a statement we need new Russian standards for beams. Do you have any idea um, when that will be coming? Um, no, I don't know yet. Well, we reckon on that, but I think it's not only the beams. If, if it comes to beams, it's only updating, I think, the, uh, the GHOST standard. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are other requirements for Russia as well. And uh, this is something that we try to figure out at the moment, but I can't say when that will happen. This is the question which is related to advanced steel. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And um, yeah, and, and there was actually another question came in again from Ivan uh, looking for localization for advanced steel. So yes, if you have any idea on, on dates, that I think is what he's asking. Yeah, so if we have, usually these, uh, uh, countrifications are done for uh, uh, for a major release, so uh, that will be once a year. So if we do something, most likely that will be for uh, uh, for the beginning of the year when when we have no releases. But I can't say now when that will be exactly. Perfect. And um, Par Prabarakan, I apologize if I said that wrong, uh, does say he has a question regarding bolt arrangements. So I'm going to try to unmute your line. And let's see. Okay. Prabar 
Kabrak. Please, please pronounce your name for me. <laughs> Last name Kasi. Kasi. You can you can call me Kasi. Okay, great. Can, can, can you hear me, Misha? We can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, actually I had a webinar with uh, uh, other uh, company. I think uh, Great Tech, some someone. Okay. Uh, they were doing the same uh, webinar for advanced steel. I was asking uh, some uh, very strange bold arrangement, uh, which is not a rectangular, which is not a square. It's 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 like a five bolts. It's arranged randomly. I was trying to do the same bolt arrangement uh, in rivet, where I don't have an option to insert a single bolt where I need. I have a only option to arrange the bolt either a rectangular or a square. So it's coming in a row actually. I need a single bolt to be inserted in the base plate. Yeah, I have, I a, I have yeah. an email snapshot actually. If I can show that, uh, it will be much clear to you what I'm trying to say. Is, yes, is yes, but I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So uh, um, the, um, the only way that I know about at the moment is to arrange rectangular and reduce the number of boards to one by one. Yeah, but do you have an option to delete uh, one particular bolt where I don't need? Yeah, for that purpose, you need to kind of dissolve it uh, or drill pattern. Um, I, you don't delete it. You just say uh, you have the drill. Let's say you, you insert a drill pattern one by two, and they have two bolts, and you don't you need only one. Just reduce it to one bolt by one so then it's only one board left but i don't i don't find a option to create a keep one one board there is minimum two board only i can place it right oh, okay so then i have to clarify that and come to you back later uh you have my email address i think just drop me an email i will figure that out and maybe post it on the forum as well yeah that will be better i'll i'll write an email to you then it will be clear okay. to me great Fine. Great. Thanks, Kazi. Okay, and the next question. Well, let's see a few of those came in. Um, Kirill is asking the question, uh, could you add to a lightweight during a drawing? Um, oh, I'm sorry, line weights. So, so can you add to as line weights during a drawing? And maybe I'll try to open your line and see if you can expand on that question. Kirill, are you able to speak with us? Uh, no, no, no. My English is bad. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, that's not a problem. Again, you have my email as well. Uh, just shoot me an email and I can take care about it later. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. All right, so we'll, we'll we'll have you guys exchange some emails there. Perfect. And what I'll do, Granada, is um, I'll take note of which uh, emails to pass over to you so that you can uh, talk directly to them. Yes, okay. okay. And I do see Robert is raising his hand. Robert, I'm going to try to uh, unmute your line to see if you can ask a question. Oh, it dropped on me. Did that allow you to ask your question, Robert? It doesn't seem like the mic is working. Okay. All right, well, let's go to the next one then. Um, next one, uh, Kazi, I see your hand is raised. Did you have another question? I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you to see if, it, if you do. Hello, uh, Michelle, I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, when I try to model the steel elements, I want to present the steel connections, especially moment connection. I have an option to present the moment connection symbol, but sometimes the moment connection symbol is coming and uh, uh, clashing with uh, other steel elements. Is there any way to control this moment connection symbol where I can move the symbol of that moment connection symbol where I can move or where I can control it. because I, right now I don't see any control point for this moment connection symbol. Oh, good question. I don't know that either. I have to clarify on that as well. Sorry. Okay. 
uh, I, did, I didn't get I didn't get him actually what he said Gurnat, can you repeat what you had said did we lose your audio let me see what's happened Gurnat, are you able to speak with us oh no it seems we've lost his audio. Um, we may have to take all of the questions offline. He is my expert. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, oh, there I, you are. Now I can hear you. Now we can hear you. Uh, we, we didn't hear what you had said. Oh, I said uh, I come back on that and I'm, I come back on that later. OK, all right. So so you're not you'll we'll be checking on that. Perfect. Fine. Right. And so the next question is coming in from Senk. Um, cold form still support in Revit is limited to a few sections recently. Is there any plan to extend it? On Revit, uh, at the moment, we don't have any plans to extend that because there are applications out there available to support that, uh, for instance, from uh, Structsoft Solutions. So I recommend reaching out to them because they they do pretty much everything. They they have all you need, I hope, including the come export and stuff like that. So that that should work. If that doesn't help, uh, uh, yeah, reach out to me again. But uh, I'm very sure that Structsoft solutions will be a solution for you. Perfect. And then Thabo is asking the question, is it possible to have Revit with all the advanced steel capabilities? Now, now that's an interesting question. Uh, not yet. Uh, it's, it's interesting. So if you, I'm not sure if you have a look at the, at the forums. On one hand, customers are complaining, why do you spend so much effort into Revit, right? And now you're asking, why don't you be faster on Revit? Yes, please give us a little bit of time. Uh, we are we are working on it, but but it will will take some time. You can imagine that's a lot of work. We have added a few years ago, uh, a couple of years ago, all, uh, all the connections and user connections. Now we are going into automation and stuff like that. And there's still some stuff missing, like uh, 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 welded sections, cur curved section, curved beams. Uh, <laughs> Plate, uh, welded plates, not not talking about only uh, 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 other stuff about secondary steel like stairs, handrails, ladders, and so on. So there's uh, uh, only from the modeling point of view uh, some way to go. And then we have to add all the other content like numbering and then spitting out the 2D content like NC files or uh, uh, the 2D drawings. Um, we, it, it will come, but please give us a little bit more time. Great. And Vivek, or, yeah, Vivek is asking advanced steel add-in for Revit, how to add in Revit, and is this chargeable? I don't know which, which add-in you're talking about. Okay, maybe we'll take that one offline and um, come back to that. Okay, the next question, just looking at the time here. Let's see. Oh, uh, so there's a question coming in. Is there any webinar about robot? Uh, that is a great question. Um, we can definitely add that to the list of topics. And in fact, at the end of the webinar, um, you'll have an option to fill in a survey. And we love to get your feedback because you know, each quarter I develop the new roadmap for what topics we discuss, and I look first and foremost at the uh, feedback we get in those surveys. So if there are specific topics you'd like to see, add that to the survey at the end, and I'll make sure it gets on the roadmap. So yeah, great question. Yeah, the, the thing what I can say about robot is the following. Uh, we are working much more on robots than in the past so we we uh, there will be we have done already a lot of new features in the current version and there will be a lot of enhancements in the following releases and we also working on uh, uh, on the revit side 
to uh, um, to have a better support of engineering work. So on on the uh, uh, the analytical model, and not not the physical model. So you can expect a lot of more things. So it's it's um, excellent questions, but I'm not the right guy answering all the uh, detailed questions, but uh, keep in mind, yes, we have done a lot and we are going to do a lot of more on, on the robot side. Great. And we have our coworker, Philip, uh, with us today, and he has answered a couple of questions. I'm going to unmute your line, Philip, if that's okay. Are you there? Yes. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm just going to try to answer two questions. Uh, the question about uh, how to get a single board in the Revit environment. So you may create a, a rectangular group of boards, and then in the properties, if you change the number on side one to one, and the number on side two to one, then you get a single board. So this is a way to do it. And for the question about the advanced add-in for Revit, I believe this is about the advanced extension for Revit. So this is something which is uh, available for, for free if you are a current uh, subscriber. You may find it in your Autodesk account. So you may uh, download it and install it from there. And as a result, if you uh, start restart at Revit, if you go to the add-in tab, you will see the advanced extension. And from there, you can export the Revit model to advanced Steel or vice versa. And you can also synchronize the changes uh, between Revit and Advanced Steel. Excellent. Thank you so much, Philip, for joining us and for having those answers. I appreciate that. You're yeah, welcome. OK, let's go to the next question. Um, I'm not sure we can answer this, but I'll, I'll bring it up uh, because it might develop a lot into a great discussion. Will the corona crisis affect the job opportunity in the world? That's a really interesting question. Does anyone have any input? If, if you'd like to kind of give your input on this, because you know this is just kind of predicting the future of, of the, the world here. Um, if you do have some comments or questions around that, I would love to unmute your line and, and hear what you have to say. I would say yes and no. So on one hand, uh, why should it in our case? Because uh, how how the companies are working, they they it shouldn't change a lot. But as we see it, it, it really does. So more and more companies are really uh, uh, um, accepting uh, or are going after cloud applications like BIM 360 to uh, Exchange to work remotely. The interesting thing is that even companies, let's say last year, which have not been interested in any kind of cloud collaboration, they are really going after it because they say now, now we can continue the work. So even if they are not working with offshore detailing companies, only for internal use, we see a, a, a huge growth and an acceptance for that. And that's the reason uh, uh, why we are uh, why we were investigating and um, into it and uh, uh, see what we can do in that regards. So and what we, you have seen in my presentation, like we the sole collaboration and communication is a big thing for us, regardless of Corona. And uh, we also believe even if the whole Corona crisis is is over. It will have changed a lot of ways how companies are working internally and externally. Um, so thinking about why don't we need everyone in the office all the time? So can can we can can we support work from home in a better way? Or the acceptance to work with uh, 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 other companies anywhere on on the globe doing uh, some work for each other. So I think it will change a lot uh, in the future. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. I think the biggest change we'll see is more opportunities to work remote uh, even after the crisis is over, so. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Anyone else want to throw out their predictions uh, from, from the attendees? I can unmute your line if you're interested. You can just raise your hand in the panel. Uh, Coffee, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. 
Hi, Michelle. I have a last final question. Actually, this one I faced recently. Uh, my engineer wants to uh, take a section or elevation which is in curve profile. I know Revit will have a Revit uh, has an option to create a framing elevation and building elevation, which is in a straight line, 90 degree. Is there any way to create a elevation which can run along with the curve profile? Unfolded elevation. I want to prepare an unfolded elevation. Oh, you you, you oh you you have a so to speak a curved view. Yeah, right. I have a curved curved truss which is running around a 300 to 400 meter. Yes. In plan in plan it looks curved. I want to make a elevation which should show the unfold elevation. Yes, range. I've I've heard that request. So it's one thing is uh, it's not only steel, also in in, in concrete projects. Uh, so if you have curved walls and stuff like that, uh, yeah. From my understanding, that's not possible yet. I don't know if that will be possible anytime soon. This is what I don't know, but the I know that we are aware about it as Autodesk. Um, so um, it's a. Uh, uh, it, it is a tricky thing. It seems to be easy, but it's not. Because if you really want to unfold a curved view, it's really like stretching it and, and all the, the lengths are um, not as you can see it. It's, uh, uh, it it's, it's a heavy task. So, but what we know about it, but I don't know when. when it I, I, I struggled very much. Uh, I made a, a every five meter one section, and then I managed to bring all sections together in sheet, then somehow I managed to prepare the unfold elevation. When he was trying to measure with the scale, he was still able to find the discrepancy between the section locations. That's why I really uh, had a very bad experience when I tried to prepare this one. I was not able to present what he was expecting actually. So if, if, if Rivet can have this uh, feature, it will be very uh, helpful when we go for curved profile elevation, especially be because yes. this is very, very, very helpful when we go for steel structure framing uh, modeling, actually. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, again, we, we are aware about it, but I don't know when it will be. Maybe you can have a note on this. In future uh, uh, release, it, it can be developed, I guess. Uh, yes, yes, it, it is on our radar. This is what I can say, right? Yeah, you, you, the interesting thing is like, if you have a look at uh, Revit core, this has nothing to do with structural steel or not steel because it's really core technology. Uh, we, version 2021, we have now better possibility to create the implemented curved walls for and um, so that, how the request for a curved view, so to speak, um, might increase. I don't know. We will see. Okay, great. We have time for just one more quick question. So let me. Um, Michelle? No. Yeah. Just one, one note. Uh, make sure you fill out the survey uh, and put your requests in, or, uh, you know, uh, and the, I also posted a link to the Rabbit Ideas Forum. So please post those there because they really look at it and uh, you know review those uh, constantly uh, for future updates. So please don't forget to fill those out. Yes, yeah, that's definitely how to get your ideas into the software is, is filling out those forums, going to the forums in the ideas area um, and stuff like that. So perfect. So Sync is asking the question, as far as I know, Sigma and Z section profiles are not supported by Revit structural steel workflow. Is there any way to use them as structural members? That's a tricky thing. Um, at the moment, you might have some issues, let me say it like this. Um, we, in the future, we need to improve that. I know that's a little bit fuzzy, but uh, it's something we uh, we still need to work on. Okay, great. Well, that brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, I want to thank everyone, especially Gernot. Thank you so much for your presentation. Philip, thank you um, for jumping in to answer some of the questions. Norman, thank you for your help as well. 
uh, it really takes a team effort to make these happen. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the presentation today. I really am glad that you joined us and we look forward to seeing you again uh, in three months. We'll, or, um, we will do another structural topic. And I did post in the Q&A uh, link to that, but I will um, also make sure that that link is sent to you via email with the recording. So thank you everyone and you have a wonderful day. Oh, one, one more thing. If you if you have the time to fill out the survey, the link would very much appreciate it. That would be awesome. Thanks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and that, that link is in the chat there. Um, so definitely go out and fill that out. It is very helpful for us to know exactly what you need. All right. Thanks, everyone. You have a great day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.